it always makes me smile to uh, wake up at south of the border. I always like to take at least a quick peek into the uh, gift shop to see uh, what sort of merch they have. Oh, I really do like this t-shirt here. You never sausage a place. You're always a wiener at Pedro's. This is one of my favorite uh, billboards. You know, as you're driving towards south of the border, you see all these billboards with, you know, puns and fun things on them. And then you, this is kind of the classic. You have this big 3D hot dog on the billboard. And it says, you never saw such a place. You're always a wiener at Pedro's. Like, like you know, as if it were saying, you never saw such a place, but instead it's, you never sausage a place. Like, you know, a sausage, like a hot dog. And then doubles down the pun, you're always a wiener at Pedro's. Instead of, you're always a winner. You're always a wiener, and it ties into the whole sausage pun. This one's cool too. This has a Pedro on there, and he's made of words. See Sombrero Tower, so that's like all the different attractions here are the words forming uh, forming Pedro. Yes, yeah, is America's favorite roadside attraction. Definitely one of them. And this shirt here appears to have the entire history of South of the Border on there. It's a lot to read for you know, just a T-shirt. Yeah, a little plushy Pedro there. It's not too early to get a uh, south of the border Christmas ornament. The train there. I don't know what the train. I don't know what the train has to do with anything. There's definitely not a train here, but it's pretty. Uh, still pretty cool. Some other uh, south of the border Christmas ornaments. That one's got Pedro on it. These postcards here, but these aren't postcards from south of the border. These are postcards from Graceland. That's interesting. Yeah, the Memphis postcard there. Yeah, these are <laughs> the Peabody Hotel. Interesting, why are all these Memphis postcards here? Although I, I am a fan of these. I've seen these before. These are the Elvis Presley recipes. They all have different recipes for his different favorite, uh, favorite foods. So yes, I do love uh, staying here at South of the Border. You, know, you come in, the neon's all on, it's lit up, and then uh, you sleep in your nice comfy bed, and wake up and get to see all the fiberglass illuminated by daylight. Now, the one, one, one issue, the, uh, the, the Wi-Fi here at South of the Border is, uh, is, 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 is no good. It, uh, I had to use, I had to use uh, my phone to try to get the yesterday's video uploaded. So my one complaint about South of the Border, the, the, the Wi-Fi is, uh, is, is not, uh, not up to my needs. But other than that, I enjoyed uh, my stay. Now we're planning on heading south um, to Florida. I'm hoping to get to Florida tonight, but we'll just see. We'll have to just uh, play it by ear and, uh, and see when we get there. I am, uh, I am uh, probably going to make a few stops along the way, so we'll just kind of see how things pan out. But uh, please, follow me. Now this restaurant here had not opened up the last time I was in uh, south of the border. It used to be called Hot Tamale. They had, they closed it down, they changed the name to Burrito Loco. So I figured we'll maybe, uh, we'll, 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 we'll try out Burrito Loco here. It says it's uh, Mexican street food. I do love the dining room here. Those pink booths are uh, pretty amazing. The salsa and toppings bar here, the different flavors of salsa. So onions, radishes, cucumber, cilantro. All right, so I got a carnitas taco and a barbacoa taco. And um, honestly, I'm not sure, I'm not sure which is which. They both look fairly similar. Give these 
a try here. Dip that in some of the some of the salsa. Mm. It is super good. Very delicious. You can try the other one. They taste slightly different. I don't know. I don't know which is which. I like this first one better. I think, I think this is the barbacoa. I think, but I'm not sure. That is so tasty. Yeah, this is really good. And a fine meal was had here at south of the border. But now we must say goodbye to south of the border and get back on that long, lonesome road. And we have landed here in Savannah, Georgia. I decided to swing by the city of Savannah on our way down to Florida. I wanted to check out uh, one of my favorite attractions here in, uh, in this part of the country, and that is the Graveface Museum. It's an excellent uh, museum of true crime and oddities. And uh, as I came into town, I wanted to, before we go over to the Graveface Museum, I wanted to stop at the Graveface record shop. Now they're both owned by Ryan Graveface, the founder of the museum. He also has a record label and his own record shop. And I've never been to the record store before, so I figured before we head over to the Graveface Museum, we can uh, check out Graveface Records. So the Terror Vision logo there. And peeking through, you can see uh, Bald Chucky. All right, let's check this out. Graveface Records, the grave face there. Another little grave face hanging right there. You can see that sideshow type banner there welcoming us in. Oh, look at that. There's a four, four horned Jacob sheep that actually looks to be pretty rough shape. As we enter here, we see this Dairy Queen. I think it's a mascot costume. You can see holes there. You stick your arms out of, and I guess the person in the ice cream cone costume would be look out the mouth there, and then have their human arms flailing up those holes. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Look at that owl mask there. Have this uh, this pig head <laughs> mascot suit. Yeah, big fan of these uh, creepy masks here. It's like the witch from Snow White. Some terrifying animal masks there. Oh gosh, I didn't even see up there. We have Smurfette. Oh, look at that Bert. Look at Bert up there. The Teletubby head. Which Teletubby is that? If uh, you remember the name of the yellow Teletubby, leave a comment in the comment section. I mean, you see the devil himself there wearing an Unsolved Mysteries shirt. And look at this, they have the, the record for uh, for Unsolved Mysteries. I, I Hopefully it has the, the theme song on there. I don't know what other things it has on there besides the one song, but the, the theme song to Unsolved Mysteries is a true classic, one of the spooky pieces, most spooky pieces of music ever created. But yeah, I wonder what all the, I wonder if it's just that song on a loop, I don't, I have no idea. See, so yeah, it looks like it has the uh, extended theme. And then all the rest are just atmospheric music that goes along with the different uh, cases and stories. And you can see here in Graveface Records that chaos truly does reign. And look at that, it's like some sort of Fiji mermaid, but just a much more monstrous version. Over here, I think this may be the most decrepit piece of taxidermy I have ever seen. It's some sort of uh, antlered animal like a deer or a caribou. You can see, I think it's been burned. It's like the top has been like burned. You can see like the straw coming out of the bottom of the neck. That is terrifying. Oh yeah, here we have a, it's a possum's face. Not a head, but just a possum face with that long tongue hanging out. 
who's lurking up there in the rafters. We got Mickey, Os Oscar, and uh, Gizmo. In the back here, I have a uh, creature from the Black Lagoon pinball machine. See the creature itself lurking there on the top. Another Fiji mermaid there. And then down here, got the mermaid head. Now this is a, this is a Fiji mermaid made by Juan Cabana. He uh, is one of the, the, the most well-known makers of, uh, of Fiji mermaids. And I actually have a piece uh, that he made in my collection, probably the crown jewel of my collection. He's known he made some of the covers for uh, the Weekly World News and uh, they use some of his work in that documentary that uh, that documentary that said that mermaids were real. A couple of uh, shrunken heads here as well. See down here, we have Super Squirrel. He is uh, removing his squirrel skin to reveal that he is actually a superhero underneath, which is pretty amazing. And $200 is a good price for a super squirrel. Does anyone remember when that one guy was going around gluing hats onto pigeons? Which at first seemed like a really adorable thing to do, but then turned out it's horrible because you, you know, you shouldn't glue anything to an animal. Oh, check out this down here. I think that's some sort of coyote wearing a witch hat. Oh, and there's a big pile of spooky babies. Down here we have some, uh, looks like some real human skulls, human foot as well. Yeah, super spooky stuff. <laughs> oh, and look at this. As I was leaving, I noticed this. Unpriced bones range between four and 12. So you just, you pick what bones you want and uh, they'll price them. They're between four and $12. These are ribs, I think. So very cool, some uh, wonderful oddities in uh, in the record shop here, but uh, yeah, I can't wait to get over to the actual uh, Graveface Museum. All right, let's head down here, little cobblestone street. I'll be right. Parked down here by the river. The uh, Graveface Museum is in the back of these buildings right here, so we'll have to walk around. And here we are. The Graveface Museum, Oddities Museum, focusing on all things unusual, macabre, unique, and mysterious. See here, this headless skeleton assures us that uh, they are open. Oh, look at this, all the uh, taxidermied heads on the wall. You have kind of an oddity shop here in the front before you enter the museum. You can buy some uh, beaver skulls there. Now look at that porcupine there with the sash. And this is like a... Uh, like a carnival punk where you'd like play a game and try to knock that over. Yeah, all sorts of jars of fun here. It's different uh, wet specimens. Looks like these ones are for purchase. It's a case full of uh, Ouija boards there. Of course we could see Bert and Ernie up there on top of the Ouija boards and this massive giraffe here. Massive giraffe head. Oh yeah, look at this sheep right here. It's a tiny little sheep. I guess these are not for sale. I'd love to I'd love to take him home to, to stay in the bunker. Oh there's a there's a groundhog. That's not that's not Punxsutawney Phil there. Oh look up here, they actually have a woolly booger or asquatch there for sale. That's only two hundred dollars. That's a good price. I would buy I have I have my own woolly booger, otherwise I would uh, scoop that up right now. I don't know that I need to. Maybe I need to. Look at these mugs here. This is the skull face clown. That's from a, uh, a John Wayne Gacy painting. 
then here's the Graveface Museum cup with their uh, devilish entrance. These clowns here, not for sale. They are for adoration, not for purchase. And that is a terrifying pose there for that possum. It's a very angry possum. It's that Masonic black bear up there on the top shelf. I can definitely see a lot of changes already. The uh, the uh, admission desk used to be right here. They said that they have some new uh, exhibits that were not here the uh, the last time I was here. Yeah, waiting here for our tour to begin in front of the uh, the devil mouth here. All right, entering through the mouth of Satan here, and here we have probably one of the largest collections of. Homer Tate artifacts, one of the most famed gaff makers of all time. See these humanoid figures, you would make these for carnivals or curiosity shops to show off. This is the wolf boy right here, a jungle pygmy. Here is a uh, Fiji mermaid created by Homer Tate. It says that he actually used his wife's hair, his dead cat's teeth, and uh, the leg of a petrified turtle to put together this uh, very interesting Fiji mermaid. There's a lot of Fiji mermaids in our travels, but this one's pretty special with that red hair. And there's a Devil's Child by, uh, by Homer Tate. He would just use different things that he found, a lot of paper mache, but he'd also incorporate animal bones that he found in the desert. But uh, apparently he, um, he, uh, he flew too close to the sun because he was caught robbing graves, actually was robbing graves in order to use the, the skin to make shrunken heads. And uh, that shrunken head right there in the middle is actually made from a human head that he, uh, he stole from a grave. So yeah, that part of the story is a little more, uh, a little more uh, upsetting, but he did, apparently did spend some time in jail, not too long because he was a, uh, you know, well-known figure in the community, but definitely a uh, black mark on his, uh, on his career. So here, this is another Fiji mermaid. That's a cool one. That's not made by, uh, by Homer Tate, but still a uh, very cool Fiji mermaid. Some other uh, strange taxidermy here. It's the world's smallest acrobats. There, I think these are these are stillborn kittens performing a circus act. We have some uh, some uh, pickled punks, a uh, you know a rubber baby that we place in a jar for a uh, for a circus sideshow act. It says this is the oh, this here. Okay, this is Homer Tate here. It says the last known PC ever um, worked on. Says that okay, so at the museum, they're not sure what he was going for, but they call it the potato baby here at the museum. And look at that, you can see that book back there. Homer Tate would actually sell his uh, sell his oddities in a catalog there. Yeah, you can see like shrunken heads for sale, but little did you know you possibly could get a a, a real head mixed in there. Yeah, some strange things in here, just like a mass of taxidermy there, all entangled together. And we have a, um, a group of satanic mice here doing a uh, human sacrifice. This here in the center of the room is Eddie the Circus Bear. It's a, a bear from the 1950s that performed in the circus. He would ride this very unicycle, same unicycle he's taxidermied with. It's the one that he would ride in the circus. Here's Clementine, the five-legged cow. Let's see, five fully formed legs. You, know, you see a lot of freak calves, a lot of two-headed calves at Ripley's and whatnot, but it's much rarer to see ones that are that are that are aged like this. You know, a lot of times you see them there; they're stillborn or don't live very many days. But see, this one at least made it uh, a little while. Yeah, it was able to get to a somewhat uh, normal size, although it does not look like it uh, reached adulthood. Yeah, wonderful bits all over this room. Some more Homer Tate's work. This is a uh, Jenny Hanover, which is like a uh, they take like a stingray and they cut it in certain pieces to make it appear like a humanoid being. 
can see a two-headed, uh, two, it's a two-headed hydrocephalic, hydrocephalic calf. Another two-headed calf right there. And then a two-headed piglet. Wonderful Fiji mermaid there. And uh, that is a, okay, chupacabra hand. Here is the hoodoo section. Hoodoo is like local folk magic. So this is a hoodoo coffin spell there. It's the baby doll in the coffin. And it says the wood in this room was recovered from this home right here. The home of Madame Truth, who was a hoodoo priestess here in Savannah. And apparently when they moved into this building, there was a, uh, behind the wall, they actually found a uh, secret shrine, a secret hoodoo shrine back there. I don't know if you can see, let me get my uh, flashlight there. Okay, yeah, you can see there's different hoodoo artifacts that were um, put in the wall and covered up and left. So, yeah, a, a hoodoo shrine built into the very building in which this museum uh, now resides. The conjoined lamb here. Uh, so that, that's a very interesting case where it's almost like placed in like a shadow box or a frame. It's a spider fawn, a uh, stillborn deer born with six legs and two heads. Very miraculous creature there. There's a voodoo doll up there and a Haitian voodoo skull. And here we have the UFO room, different accounts of local UFO sightings. See drawings here. People had UFO sightings or experiences. Okay, this section here has been completely remodeled to have a uh, a skull hallway or skullway, as I often like to call them. The grave of Anton LaVey, the founder of the, uh, the Church of Satan. So wow, this whole room has been completely redone. It's now the uh, the Church of Satan room. So look over here, we have this hyper-realistic wax figure of Anton LaVey, of course the founder of the uh, Church of Satan there. That is so realistic looking. I almost have expected him to like jump scare me. Apparently he is wearing uh, one of Anton LaVey's actual pentagram necklaces that uh, that he would wear. There's information here about uh, the Church of Satan and uh, and their beliefs. Of course, you know it is often misunderstood. They um, they don't even they don't they do not believe in Satan. They believe in uh, kind of uh, you know kind of like a, a, a lifestyle of of doing what you please, you know, a life kind of of indulgence. Um, the whole thing about using Satan, using the satanic uh, imagery is kind of a troll job, really. I think they, a lot of times they do it to uh, antagonize other uh, religions. Notice here, this is uh, Diane LaVey Hagardi. It says she was uh, Anton LaVey's partner and also a co-founder of the Church of Satan. And then hanging up here is a human spinal cord, which apparently belonged to Anton LaVey. Just had a, he had a human spinal cord in, uh, in his collection. In this case, we have different books, magazines featuring Anton LaVey. Up here is a comic book. This is a Marvel comic book, Satana, the Devil's Daughter. Interesting. This is Joseph Conklin. He was a local uh, occultist from Savannah that went uh, went missing mysteriously, and a lot of his items were uh, donated by family uh, by his cousin to the Graveface Museum. And uh, apparently, he wrote a uh, a sequel to the Necronomicon called Necronomicon Revelations. Is uh, Damien Eccles, one of the West Memphis Three? who was initially convicted of the murder of three boys along with uh, two of his friends. That was, uh, it was later, uh, later the, the, the case was 
uh, retried and he was uh, set free after being on uh, death row. Um, here is here's some of his artwork here. And uh, this, this is a form that, uh, that he filled out to become a student of the mysteries. He's really into like uh, magic and the occult. Here is a letter from David Berkowitz, the son of Sam Killer. Says that he no longer wants to be called the son of Sam as he has converted to Christianity and likes to be called the son of hope. Here is uh, some artwork by Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, one of the most uh, brutal and, and horrific killers of all time. It's an exhibit here on the Odd Fellows, the uh, secret society, some of the uh, robes and masks they would wear during their uh, during their rituals. And then over here we have a uh, a skeleton, an Odd Fellow skeleton. They would use skeletons in their rituals, and apparently some of the Odd Fellows would donate their skeletons to be used in uh, future rituals. And this skeleton here actually belongs to the uh, the uh, grandfather, the great grandfather of uh, Ryan Graveface, who owns the museum. Apparently, they uh, they found this skeleton, and and we're going to try to donate it back to the family after it was recovered from the Odd Fellows Lodge. And uh, Ryan uh, accepted it, said he was the only member of the family that was interested, and uh, had uh, decided to display it in his museum. There's an odd fellow skull. This is also used in rituals. You can see there's inscriptions on it. It says friendship or benevolence. And I'll tell you what, these odd fellow masks, they, 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 they are, they are unsettling. I think that's something going deeply troubling about those masks. Here is an embalming kit from the 1940s. You'll see an actual gravestone there. I don't know who that, uh, whose grave that is. I guess apparently it's it's Benjamin Warren's grave, but I don't know. I don't I don't know why it's here. <laughs> and then this is a uh, a wax head that was used at a uh, embalming school. Of course, they'd have to practice before they worked on an actual human face. As we come around the corner here, we have uh, another than Michael Myers. Oh, this is some sort of interesting sign he's holding here. I don't know if that is a Masonic sign, but uh, hey, Michael. Here is the haunted items cabinet here. It says here, they said they enjoy having creepy dolls and creepy items around the store, but anything in this case is more than just creepy. It uh, has some sort of haunt, haunted energy to it, or some sort of creepy story behind it. See, it's loaded with creepy haunted dolls here. Oh, look at that clown. This little fellow over here is Willie Talk, and apparently he does talk. It says that he was originally in the record store, and uh, guests that would walk by him would, uh, would hear their own names whispered in their ears, which is more than a little creepy. It's a creepy old fellow, this Willie Talks. And then, uh, this is a creepy doll story. This is so this doll here. It said that uh, a man brought home a set of porcelain dolls and that he inherited and put them in his daughter's room. That his daughter had nightmares that the dolls would uh, steal her eyes at night. And nightmares of dolls trying to take her eyes. And it said they placed the dolls in a box and put them in the attic. And when they put the dolls in the attic, they had eyes. And uh, then the, the gentleman went to the attic to retrieve the dolls, open the boxes, and all the dolls were missing their eyes. Wow, it's black, like a shark's eyes. And this is pretty cool. This is a painting made by Edward Warren, of course, the famed uh, paranormal investigator from such uh, cases as the Amityville Horror and the Annabelle Doll case. So. One of the most famous paranormal uh, investigators of all time actually painted that picture there. A collection of pinball machines in here. A lot of them are horror themed. Scorgar, so Elvira, and, uh, Dracula pinball. Uh, 
there's the Monster Bash. This is a really fun one. Freddy Krueger. Haunted House. The Munsters. Something called Bone Busters. Here. I'll look up there. There's a, uh, a, a skull head on top. Oh, look at this. Tales from the Crypt. I, man, I... I, 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 I want to watch these old Tales from the Crypt so bad. They're not on streaming anywhere. Because apparently that's like a nightmare legally on who owns it. But uh, man, bring someone, someone, bring back Tales from the Crypt. Here's uh, Dungeons and Dragons Tower of Doom. I don't think I've ever played this before. I don't know if this is like, I remember I played a game called Golden Axe. It was one of my favorites, I've not played this. Oh look, there's like goblins. Gotta pick up this book? What's this book do? Okay, got the book. Oh no, more goblins. Why is there so many goblins? There's a sideshow section all these cards from uh, from different uh, different sideshow performers oh there is Millie Christine it was the African-American Siamese uh, twins I've actually been to their grave they're buried in uh, in North Carolina yeah and uh, the other yeah Daisy and Violet Hilden the other famous pair of Siamese twins they're also buried in North Carolina, buried in uh, in Charlotte, and I've actually been to uh, to their grave as well. And uh, Chang'an and Bunker, another set of, of Siamese twins, are also buried in Mount Airy, North Carolina. So for whatever reason, uh, North Carolina, the home of the three most famous sets of Siamese twins. The bearded lady there. There's uh, Jojo, Jojo the dog-faced boy and a, uh, a cast here, a life-size cast of the uh, Grady Stiles Jr., the Lobster Boy hand. And if you wanna hear like a fascinating tale, look up the, uh, the Lobster Boy uh, murders. It's, it's a crazy, crazy story. There's a special exhibit on this man, Captain Don Leslie. Apparently he was a sideshow performer as well as a uh, tattoo artist. You can see some of his tattoo work there. There is his tattoo gun and there is a sword that uh, that he has swallowed. This is the new exhibit here, the Ed Gein Experience, a replica of Ed Gein's house built here in the Graveface Museum. Of course Ed Gein, known as the Wisconsin Cannibal or the Wisconsin Ghoul, he was uh, probably linked to two different murders, and uh, was also a known to collect human body parts, was a ghoul that would go to graveyards and, uh, and dig up uh, human uh, body parts. But uh, so we waiting here to uh, be let in by a uh, staff member. So this is would have been a uh, replica of uh, Ed Gein's home, but they actually did it to, to point out kind of the cinematic view of Ed Gein as opposed to the real, uh, real life uh, Ed Gein. They said that Ed Gein did not make lampshade, uh, lampshade out of human skin because he didn't have any lamps. He didn't have electricity in his house. And uh, they said that he did make skin out of, they made, uh, made furniture out of human parts, but they uh, they didn't have faces on it. It didn't actually look like, uh, like, uh, they didn't have faces on it. It just looked like a normal chair, even though it was made out of human skin. So that's how there's a lot of kind of, you know, right, like blurring of a line of fact and fiction with you know, people's perception of what was actually pulled out of the house versus what actually was pulled out of the house looked a lot more mundane, generally. And we have the, uh, the Ed Gein Museum section up here on the top floor. Here's some pop culture items regarding Ed Gein. Of course, he was the inspiration for Norman Bates, Leatherface, and uh, Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. So one of the most influential, you know, as far as creating fictional characters. And there is actually a, here's a collaboration that is a painting of Ed Gein painted by John Wayne Gacy. And there is a Ed Gein 
I guess barbecue apron. It says he is the original Wisconsin cannibal. You know, I, I, I am from Wisconsin. I was born in Wisconsin, and um, I don't know if I'm proud of the fact that there is an original Wisconsin cannibal that, that you have to designate because there are, you know, multiple Wisconsin cannibals. It says that this skull here belonged to Alan Wilamowski, who was the ballistic expert on the Ed Gein case. So this is not directly related to the case, but uh, belonged to the ballistics expert. That this skull was kept and used as a teaching tool. There's a gunshot wound right there between the eyes. Now there is some very graphic photos here on the wall. This one shows the evidence from Ed Gein's uh, house. These are all bags of, you know, things that he found while, uh, while grave robbing or other ways of obtaining human parts. Now it says these two chairs here were actually were upholstered in human skin, but uh, you know they just look kind of like just kind of look like normal chairs. And this over here, possibly the most um, shocking thing in this entire museum. Now, all the evidence that was collected from Ed Gein's house was burned. It was destroyed uh, for obvious reasons. It was you know all these human remains that he was hoarding in uh, in his house. Uh, and this is the only creation of Ed Gein's made from human remains that exists here in this museum. That is uh, the keychain that Ed's truck keys were on. And there is a part of a bullet up there and then uh, a strand of woman's hair. Now it's not been shown which, uh, which woman this came from. But uh, yeah, this is this is Ed Gein's keychain. This is what he would start his truck with. It's the that long strand of uh, of human hair. Pretty horrifying. Wait, who's this guy right here? Oh, look at that! He's got that circus circus hat. I think Jen was telling me that she used to have a pink circus circus hat. I'll have to ask her if this is the one she had. But I guess I'm gonna head up the stairs here. See Ronald McDonald there playing on the stairs. Now the the uh, sideshow exhibit used to be up here, so I don't know. They've changed things around. I have to see what uh, what is up here. Oh, look at that! The deer heads there. Oh, what is that? Some sort of squirrel creature? Okay, so up here we now have the uh, true crime room. So one of these true crime artifacts here. These are. Believe it or not, Eileen Warnos, one of those famous uh, female serial killers of all time. That's that's her underwear. And look at this. A ice skate signed by none other than Tanya Harding, two-time US champion, two-time Olympian, and uh, certain parts of her story are left out there when she uh, smashed, or allegedly had, uh, friends of hers smashed the knee of Miss Nancy Kerrigan there. Wow. Charlie Manson section here. There's the original sign from Spawn Ranch. It's the old Wild West ranch that he lived uh, with the uh, Manson family. There is a, uh, a board from, uh, or it's a shingle, a rooftop shingle from Roman Polanski's house where the uh, of course, the Manson family crimes took place. And then uh, just a pair of Charlie Manson's sweatpants. Check this out. This is Jim Jones of Jonestown. This is his actual sunglasses there. The man responsible for the Jonestown massacre. And uh, equally remarkable is here is these packs of Flavor Aid. These are actual packs of Flavor Aid. That were uh, that were I guess unused, but uh, from the box that uh, was used at the Jonestown massacre, they of course uh, placed poison, a poison cocktail in these, and uh, the cult drank these, and uh, as a way to uh, to end their lives. One of the, the most famous uh, mass uh, self unalivings ever uh, ever to occur. And yeah, the funny thing is that often people talk about the Jonestown, they say, um, you know, don't drink the Kool-Aid or, or things to that like kind of became a, uh, a slang term. But 
technically not Kool-Aid, it was actually the off-brand Flavor-Aid. It's a uh, VCR belonging to the Heaven's Gate cult, a uh, group of people that uh, believed that a UFO was traveling behind a comet and was ready to pick them up, so they, uh, they left their earthly vessels, they left their bodies and, uh, in a self-unaliving action so that they could uh, hop a ride on the UFO. Here's their leader, Marshall Applewhite, explaining why this is a good idea. Probably shouldn't watch this for too long. Here we have the uh, Gacy section here. Uh, Pogo the Clown, his alternate identity. See, there's a painting that uh, he made of, uh, oh, I guess a self-portrait of him as Pogo the Clown. And these are all John Wayne Gacy photos here or paintings, rather. See, he actually liked to paint uh, Disney characters. It's Bambi and Mickey Mouse. Also some horror movie characters there. And uh, some of his uh, colleagues. There's Mickey, and there is a skull clown. Also, uh, he really loved the seven dwarves. All these seven dwarf Paintings are by uh, are by Gacy. Oh my gosh! Yeah, he loved those dwarves. There is uh, John Wayne Gacy's license plates. There. There's a picture of uh, Gacy's crawl space. And here we have a replica of the crawl space. Some of the remains down there. This is. This is insane. This is a model of John Wayne Gacy's home that was made by John Wayne Gacy. Constructed this model in prison. Apparently he was trying to disprove some of the testimony against him by creating a model of his house and showing that the, uh, that the, uh, the, the testimony was inaccurate. But if you look closely, you can see that he put portraits of clowns in every room. Also, it's like these bright colors. This man, this man was a, was a beyond a monster. You can see how he just toys with people. But apparently he really did have clown portraits all over his house. This clown painting, this is not painted by Gacy, this is a clown painting that Gacy had hanging in his own bedroom staring at him. So yeah, he's he's all in on being an evil clown. A yeah, great, uh, great museum, the Gray Face Museum. Obviously, it, it does lean towards the darker, more macabre side of the human experience, but uh, it is one of the most amazing collections of the you know, sideshow artifacts, the sideshow gaffs. You'll never, you won't find a better collection of sideshow gaffs like they have here, and uh, the true crime section's amazing. Some of the artifacts, you know, the the, uh, the Ed Gein keychain, and uh, you know, the the collection of John Wayne Gacy is almost, that's almost unmatched. So uh, definitely, if you're interested in true crime, if you're interested in kind of the darker side of humanity and the macabre, I, I could not recommend the uh, Graveface Museum anymore. It's uh, definitely a, a must check out here in Savannah if if you are into those things. So right now I am going to go locate my car. I'm going to go find my car and I'm going to drive into Florida. I think um, probably get there late tonight. So I'm going to just get in, get in the car and just drive and drive and drive. And then tomorrow we will uh, begin our day in the Sunshine State. Um, my plan is to celebrate New Orleans, Cele celebrate Mardi Gras, not New Orleans, celebrate Mardi Gras in Central Florida. I want to see what the different theme parks have to offer when it comes to Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras celebrations. Of course, uh, you know, we didn't make it to New Orleans next year. I have been to Mardi Gras. I may try to make it to Mardi Gras again in the future, but this year we're going we're gonna to see what Mardi Gras is like.
in the Central Florida theme parks. So thank you so much. Thank you for following along with my adventures. If, uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country. I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun, random stuff. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop and uh, doing personalized messages on Cameo. And of course, all those things help keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.